the uh, we were talking last time about uh, radiation. So we we talked about Maxwell's equations. And so we had Gauss's law, the two versions for electric and magnetic fields. We had Faraday's law. And we had the amp Ampere's law, which had this correction term having to do with changing electric fields. So we have current enclosed, and we also have the time derivative of electric flux through a region. So this is a time derivative, dDt of electric flux. So the, what we went through last time, we said, well, because we have this changing magnetic field, which can lead to an electric field for, if, for Faraday's law, and a changing electric field, which can lead to a magnetic field for this Ampere-Maxwell law, could we have a situation where we had electric fields changing, making magnetic fields changing, making electric fields changing, etc.? And we showed the example of this pulse traveling through space. So let's just review that. So we said if you had a region of electric and magnetic fields in a uniform in some region of space, and you imagine that region just propagating in some direction. Plug that into Maxwell's equations. We worked through each one of them. We got some relationship. We found that if you work it all out, we found that the speed at which this pulse travels is 1 over square root mu naught times epsilon naught, which turns out to be the speed of light. Okay, So this thing is electromagnetic radiation. This cha it's ch changing the electromagnetic field, which is traveling through space, is what we mean is, is light. And that was one of the triumphs of Maxwell's equations in Maxwell's theory of uh, electric magnetic fields. Uh, there's some other things about radiation we should know, which is that there's actually a relationship between the directions of the, the electric and magnetic fields in radiation. And you can see from this picture, I mean, we just assumed this. I'm not going to prove it, but it turns out that in this case, you have electric field pointing up, magnetic field pointing out, and they're at uh, right angles to each other. And that's, there's a direction relationship given by basically a right-hand rule. We can think of it as a cross product. If you think about the unit vector, or the direction of the moving, char or, excuse me, the moving pulse of electric and uh, electromagnetic radiation, that's given by a cross product of the directions of the electric and magnetic field directions. Okay, this isn't these hats mean what? Hats mean unit vectors. Unit vectors just give direction information. So we're not talking about the magnitudes here. The direction, though, if I just look at, again, E pointing up here, B coming out towards us. So E direction cross with the B direction gives me the speed direction. Okay, This is called the direction of propagation. Propagation just means it's not a physical object that's moving, it's a disturbance or a pulse in the field that's actually traveling through space. Okay? There's actually a relationship between the magnitudes as well, and which is that the uh, electric field magnitude in radiation Okay, we're just talking about radiative fields here. So this is true for EM, electromagnetic radiation. V is equal to C. This is the direction relationship. The magnitude of the field, the electric field, is equal to the speed of light times the magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, and since we know that a single pulse of uniform fields traveling in this direction satisfies Maxwell's equations, I can imagine just a series of pulses. So what if I drew something like this? Let's say I have a region of electric field pointing up, 
and magnetic field pointing out. And that's going to give me E hat cross B hat, a pulse traveling in that direction. And that's true in this particular slab of space. And then I move on to the neighboring region of space, and I find the electric field is larger. And therefore, the magnetic field would be also be larger, but it's hard to draw that here. So I'll just draw circles with arrows, or circles with dots in them again. And that region of uniform field is moving that way. And then the next region over, maybe we're back to a smaller E again and a smaller B. And again, that whole region's moving. And maybe in the next region over, the electric field is pointing down. But this pulse is still moving to the right, so B's got to point in what direction? Inward, okay? So B's pointing in. And I just keep doing this. Just have just multiple regions of differing electric and magnetic fields, but they all are basically this pulse that we looked at last time. And so we know that this is a possibility because each pulse satisfies Maxwell's equations. So the entire uh, pattern here has to satisfy Maxwell's equations. So what is this thing? What did we just make? A sine wave. We made a sinusoidal wave. So maybe we can have sinusoidal radiation. And let's see what that would look like. So we get something like this. Okay. And maybe we can kill the lights here. So we get this propagating pattern of electric and magnetic fields, just imagining sort of multiple regions of pulses next to, uh, next to each other, but just taking the limit as those regions get smaller and smaller, we've just got sort of a continuously varying sine wave. And we see how... Again, the direction relationship is satisfied. Anywhere the electric field is pointing up, we have B out, right? That gives a pulse traveling in that direction. Or if E is pointing down, B is pointing in. And again, the thumb points to the right. And um, we've, we've just colored one particular observation location. We gave the arrows different colors just to set it apart so we can kind of focus on one location. And the the previous program, the one with the traveling pulse, is a little bit misleading because it looks like the arrows are actually moving. And the, the idea you want to have in your mind is not that the arrows are moving. It's that we have a series of observation locations. So each, the tail of each of these arrows is at a particular observation location in space. And I just have a string of these observation locations along a line. Okay? And I'm just setting up sort of detectors at each point and measuring the electric and magnetic fields at those locations. And it's oscillating. It keeps changing. Okay, at this particular location, the E is now up, and then it's getting smaller. Now it's down, getting smaller, up, larger, smaller, etc. Right? And at the same time, B is getting bigger and smaller into and out of the, the board, out of the, uh, the plane. And it satisfies this, again, E cross B relationship. It satisfies the magnitude relationship, drawn a slightly different scale here, E and B, just to show it. And uh, But each observation location we see, is it's each is oscillating at the same rate, but they're each successive point is slightly out of phase with the previous one so that you get this peak in the radiation, or the peak in the field, that looks like it's propagating or traveling to the right. That's what we mean by propagation. Nothing is physically moving. It's just that this disturbance, this disturbance in the force, right, or disturbance in the field, is propagating to the right, okay? Okay? Um, so, so that's radiation, sinusoidal radiation. And uh, what more do we want to say here? Well, we could also say that we're just drawing the... Uh, observation locations along the line here. We could do it in the entire region of space. Okay, so we just do it lots of times, okay? Just have lots and lots of observation locations. And we see this is sometimes called a plane wave because what I've done is, I, again, I've just drawn lines of observation locations at 
filling the region of space. And you can see if I kind of line it up here, those peaks are all lined up. And you, if you imagine tracing a plane back through the, uh, uh, the depth of the field here, you can see the peaks all travel together. And if you trace the plane through those peaks, that plane would be moving. So this is sometimes called a plane wave, plane, uh, plane wave fronts. Okay? Uh, but this is what we mean by radiation. Okay? It's just imagining the at various observation locations in space, you have this undulating or oscillating pattern of electromagnetic fields, and that peak is pa traveling in some particular direction we call the direction of propagation. Okay? Questions here?